Hello, dudes, dudettes, duders, and everyone in between, and welcome to How to Do Everything So You Don't Have To. I'm your host, Jesse Kester, and in today's video, we are going to quantifiably demonstrate why we never use the H.264 output module in DaVinci Resolve. Let's get right into it so that you can get back to doing fantastic exports. All right, we are in DaVinci Resolve and we've got a timeline built with two clips and these two clips were both selected for the same reason. They have a lot of detailed and random movement. In the first clip, it's her robe and in the second clip, it's her hair blowing in the wind. What we're gonna do is export this in three different ways using DaVinci Resolve and then we're gonna do a fourth export over in Media Encoder. Then we will compare these exports and it will reveal to you, the viewing audience, why we never touch H.264 in DaVinci Resolve. Let's jump over to that Deliver tab and do some exports. The first thing you'll notice about the Deliver panel is that like every other panel in DaVinci Resolve, it is overwhelming at first glance, but I assure you, once you get your feet on the ground, you'll be fine. First thing we're gonna do is rename the file from compression to compression underscore ProRes. The location is already set and that's fine. Uh, we are gonna do a single clip export and we are gonna switch this from H.264 to Apple ProRes. Now, when you open DaVinci Resolve for the first time, H.264 will be the default, but we prefer ProRes. If you're working on a PC, DNX HD is the export codec for you. Let's do uh, ProRes 422HQ works fine, and we're gonna hit Add to Render Queue, and then we will render. Quick pro tip for people who are just starting out in Resolve, if you're jumping over from Premiere, you might be confused why your exports are exporting the entire timeline and not just your in and out points. When you're in Premiere, it exports the in and out points automatically. But when you're in DaVinci Resolve, you have to go down to this render drop down menu and switch it from entire timeline to in out range. This was what tripped me up the most when I made the migration to DaVinci Resolve, at least in the deliver panel. And I was very happy when I finally found it. All right, we'll close that out and we're gonna do another export. We're gonna do an H.264 high quality export and we're going to use Resolve's default settings, the automatic quality for this export. Let's add that to render queue. And while that is rendering, we'll have a sip of our Pomplamoose LaCroix. All right, that one's done. So now we're gonna do H.264 low quality. And to do a low quality export, we're gonna switch this from automatic to restrict to 10,000 kilobits per second. We'll add that to the render queue and we will render that. And really LaCroix Pomplamoose, you couldn't have called it grapefruit. That's really putting a tux on a pig. All right, we are going to do one more export and we're gonna do that one in Media Encoder. And that export will be an H.264 compression of the ProRes output so that we can compare how much better Media Encoder handles H.264 than DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna set this to VBR two pass and our target bit rate will be 40 megabits per second. And if they are megabytes, I apologize. Please leave a comment below. And the other, the maximum bit rate will be 60 megabits per second. And we are going to turn off audio for this export. And while that is exporting, we're gonna jump over to Resolve and load in our footage. So we've got the ProRes, the H.264, and the H.264 low quality. Let's load them into our timeline. And we're gonna do H.264 first, H.264 low second, ProRes third. And when this one, when the next one is ready, we will load that one in. For the time being, we can start to duplicate our source files. And we can actually start to look at the differences in compression. And we'll start with H.264 low because that will be the most obvious and to check qualitatively, we're gonna zoom in and just glance at these two different files by turning on and off the low quality H.264 compression. So that's the original footage and that's the low quality compression and you can see that it is quite a bit lower quality. Let's zoom back out 
and even at fully zoomed out, we can see that there's a difference between those two images. If we go back to the high quality H.264 file, you'll see that those differences are much less pronounced when we're zoomed out, but if we were to zoom in, you can see a difference. Let's zoom back out, and finally we'll look at the ProRes compression. And that is almost identical, really. That compression should be done. So, look at that, it is. We're gonna load that into Resolve, and then we will compare all these different compressions. And that will be the final one we look at. So let's select those and duplicate them. Now, the problem is, until now, we've been doing qualitative comparisons, and I want to do quantitative comparisons. I want numbers to represent the differences between these different compressions. And how we're going to do that is by selecting the compressed files and switching the composite mode from normal to difference. Let's take a minute to explain what a difference composite mode is. A difference composite mode is a way to compare two different images, and the comparison is represented by light or dark pixels. So the darker the pixels are, the more similar those two images are. The lighter the pixels are, the more different they are. To demonstrate this, I'm going to replicate our source clips, and then I'm going to do that again. Then I will switch this top layer over to difference mode, and if they are the same, the entire image should be black. To check that, we go over to the color tab, and you will see that there is no color information at all. This is an entirely black image. So let's start comparing the other files to that source material, and we're going to start with the H.264 low compression, because that will reveal the most. Now, straight away, that is different. You can see some artifacting there, but it's not really exaggerated, and I want to exaggerate it. To do that, we're going to get an adjustment clip, and we're going to drag that out over top of everything, and then we'll go to the Color tab, and we will increase the contrast a lot on that adjustment clip. So now when we go back, you can see the differences exaggerated a lot. If we turn off the adjustment clip, the contrast is lowered, and the differences aren't that pronounced. But when we turn it on, it's really obvious how different these two images are. And you'll also start to see some interesting information about how H.264 compresses, and this is exactly congruent with what we expect from H.264. So watch this image closely, and you'll see skips. Did you see that skip right there? There was that skip. So what you're seeing when it skips, the image suddenly gets darker on one frame, and that means that that frame is a keyframe. That frame has more information than your in-between frames, and the keyframe in-between frame paradigm is what makes H.264 really good for internet delivery, but really bad for acquisition and color correcting. But you start to see compression artifacts that were previously invisible. Anytime it snaps in brightness to a little bit darker, that's a keyframe. All right, that's the lowest quality compression. Let's move over to DaVinci Resolve's higher quality H.264 compression. And you'll see that overall, that image is actually darker than the low quality compression. And a darker image means that we have a more accurate representation of the source material. Now let's jump over to the ProRes file that we built in DaVinci Resolve. This one is darker still, even with the contrast exaggerated on the difference mat. It is still very, very similar and even hard for the computer to see the difference. It is quantifiably very similar. Now, finally, what we're going to do is compare the high quality DaVinci Resolve H.264 output to the high quality media encoder H.264 output. And to do that, we're going to put them side by side. And one thing I really want to hammer home is that these two files are roughly the same size. The media encoder file is 30 megabytes, and the DaVinci Resolve file is 32 megabytes. That means it's larger. So let's take a look. And you should notice that the media encoder file is darker than the DaVinci Resolve file. And this means that media encoder 
did a better job of compressing the ProRes file to H.264 than DaVinci Resolve did of compressing the RAW files to H.264. So this file has seen two generations of export and it's higher quality than this file, which has seen one generation of export. If you'd like to quantify it even more, we can go over to the color tab. I'd like you to keep your eyes on the waveform scopes in the lower right and bear in mind that the closer this is to zero, the more similar the images are. What we're gonna do is look at the same frame in both exports and you will see this readout change significantly. So here we are on the H.264 output from DaVinci Resolve and this is the media encoder output. And you'll see that the noise in the DaVinci Resolve output almost kisses up to 256. The media encoder output barely crosses 128. And these two files are the same size. So that means that DaVinci Resolve has introduced almost twice as much noise to the image as media encoder has. I hope this video is useful in helping you to understand why you should never do an H.264 output from DaVinci Resolve. You should always output to something higher quality like Apple ProRes or DNX HD, and then jump over to something like Media Encoder to do your H.264 compressions. If this was useful, please consider liking and subscribing. If this wasn't useful, please do leave us a comment below on how we could make a video that's more useful for your needs. Or, or actually, now that I think about it, you could just get back to making fantastic movies. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.